Yo, what's up guys? It's Talon. So today I'm going to talk about what I do when I get hard stuck. So on every roll at some point in the push, I get stuck at a rank. And for uh, this current push and support, it's really been about 50, 60 marks to grab master. I've kind of done a few days now, been trying to push it and, and I've just not made any progress. So when I typically am in this type of situation, I'll first start reviewing others. And um, that's kind of what I have here is my notes from reviewing some really good players. Like I watched a lot of Lamont playing support to try to figure out some some of the things I could work on and then after that I'll just review a few of my games um, to look through what I'm actually doing wrong what of these things I am doing aren't doing um, that type of thing but these are some of the things that I found in their gameplays that I might not be doing a ton um, I was watching Thresh mostly but some Gragas as well in support and so I'm not going to go over all these things but I'm just you know I have these in my mind and then I'm going to try to look at kind of what I do in one of my games so now we're just going to go over one of my games and I'm going to tell you guys what I'm looking for when I'm trying to improve and when I get hard stuck okay guys so we're in the draft now and uh the reason I want to start in the draft is because I kind of want to talk about champion pool and, and the champs you play so for me in support it feels a lot different than other roles because to me supports are obviously much more well supportive so I feel I should be picking more for the team comps than I am. I've been trying too hard to kind of like find a very small amount of champions for their support. And I think that's completely fine to, to climb on a very small amount of champions. But for me, I feel that I have good enough mechanics on a decent amount of support champions that I could widen my pool a bit and try out a bit more champs. So I want to try some more Gragas, some more Leona, Alistar, um, just play some more champions in general when it looks like the right situation so already in the future i'm thinking i want to be trying out more champs that pair better with my adcs rather than just picking whatever champion i kind of feel like in the moment because i've currently just been playing a lot of thresh um a lot of nami and, and that's really been like mostly what i've been playing so i feel like if i widen my champion pool already that might help me even though typically i do say that it's better to have a small champion pool for me that's not been working out for this challenge even though it's worked out for most of the other challenges so initially I'm going to try fixing that and then now we're going to go into the game and we're going to kind of see what goes wrong and right in this game and what I can improve on and then I'm going to write down some notes after um, for that just for what I can improve on but I've already kind of got the notes down of what I want to look for um, that we had in those notes in the intro so initially I'm going into this matchup and I'm kind of thinking I have Tristana she's really good at following up if I'm able to CC someone so for me I really want to play for the level 2 and 3 when Tristana has her um, all of her abilities up and I have my hook and my flay and then we can combo together and make some nice plays so level 1 I should not be very aggressive so I'm really hoping that that I'm not too aggressive and then one of the main things I noticed already initially from watching Lamont and watching other really good players is that when they're playing engaged supports they're trading much more aggressively when the jungler is on their side of the map so i want to look at in this game am i trading aggressively when my jungler is near and am i backing off when my jungler is not near because to me i think that's like one of my biggest issues that i really want to get better at and then another thing that i noticed that's that, that to me was very important is often i'll be playing with an adc usually i'm playing with a random adc and they'll get really low really fast and I usually am not good at combating this or stopping them from getting low so fast. And I know in this game, my ADC gets low health really fast. So I want to see what I could have possibly done to prevent that. Because when I was watching these other players, I would see them either, you know, sometimes they would just give up and let their ADC die because they can't always do anything about it. But when I would watch these players, they're getting maximum damage off while their ADC gets hooked in or, you know, goes too far forward. So I really want to see what I do in that type of situation as well and see what I can improve on in that situation. So I think it's good here so far that I'm hitting a lot for level 2 because I don't want to play aggressive until level 2 as we said earlier because we're Tristana Thresh. And here is when my ADC gets hooked in and I think already I'm going to just skip back in this replay for a second here because I think this is an important thing I want to note initially. My ADC walks up and I don't walk up with them so I already know I need to be walking up when my ADC walks up a lot more. Like, I run back because I don't want to get hooked, but my Tristana goes forward and I'm not there to help him. You can see kind of like here, I back off. Uh, we'll, it'll be in about 5-10 seconds where I back off and then they're going farther up. So already looking at that, I need to be fixing that for sure in my games. So that's definitely something I'll look for in the future is walking for more forward. Because you can see here, once he gets hooked, I'm not really in a position to auto attack them. So like I'm walking back and he gets hooked in. I need to be running forward in case he gets hooked. And then I can get a lot more damage off on the Kai'Sa. And then here, I think I greed and I end up dying. So this is kind of just a misplay of more mechanics. Like, I'm just a bit too greedy there. 
there's not as much to learn from that second mistake that's just me being dumb but um definitely my fault there and i think the problem for me that i want to work on is just walking up when my adc walks up and then now i see my jungler is on my side of the map so i hope that i trade more aggressively now but since i don't have my flash it's going to be a bit hard so ideally i pay attention to my jungler and i try to uh just yeah engage with my jungler basically here so so that's what we're going to be looking for here if we end up doing that um so it does look like i'm going for hooks and going for stuff which i think is fine uh but i think there's actually an issue here and that's that i waste my hook right before my jungler is in a place to engage because now it's on cooldown when he could have possibly been there to gank so that's a small thing but i should keep that in mind to to save my abilities even for when they're even closer uh, looking at it here, I go for the lantern for my teammate, which I think this is a good play for me to do that. So then we can end up getting the kill, and we'll probably end up getting a kill. But we do. So I'm happy with that lantern usage by me. I think that's pretty good. And then we also get the pike flash. So overall happy with how I played this situation, which is good. The two main things I'm currently thinking about I need to improve on are when my jungler is nearby, I don't waste my cooldowns until they're in a good position to gank. And then I need to walk forward when my ADC walks forward, even if I think that they're going to be like dying or getting hooked or something. And then here I roam because my ADC is not there. I think that's fine for the most part. It looks like maybe I get caught out here. But I think it's okay to roam in this situation. Uh, don't, I don't mind that too much. But again, my jungler's not here, so maybe I should only roam with my jungler now that I think about it. Um, and when I'm reviewing these things, I really want to question like every play I make. So that's why I'm kind of asking these questions to myself. So now that I think about it more, that roam is more or is less likely to work since my jungler is not very close. So um, I'm going to go back there again. And I just want to look when I roam, where is my jungler? And my jungler is resetting, as we can see in the map, as I go to roam. And my Zed is also resetting. So I don't think there's actually much I can do here, um, especially since Yasuo is level 5. So... Looking at it more, maybe I should just be paying more attention to my jungler again to roam. I think I may just not be paying enough attention to jungle in general. So uh, yeah, that's kind of what I'm gaining so far from this. I'm going to take a sip of water, guys. One second. All right. So, uh, nothing too wrong with what I do at this moment, looking fine. And then again, my jungler's not here, and we're lower level, so I should not really go too aggressive for trades. I should just kind of sit back, so I hope that I do so. Looks like I do a good job of kind of chilling for now. So, happy with this uh, little decision here, even if it's a small thing, you know. I want to really be, uh, like, focusing on everything I do here, because for me, the difference between Grandmaster and, and, and Challenger is not some grand, you know, like huge thing right it's a lot of these small things so my goal is to kind of question every small thing that i'm doing wrong um and just every decision i make i want to think about why i'm making that and if it actually makes sense so for now again play with my jungler and go up with my adc when they go up two main things i'm looking at they're not crazy huge things but they can make huge differences and cause us to win when we shouldn't now here even i don't know why back i want to look at this decision to recall um my ADC stays in lane, but the wave is nowhere near, so I back. I think it's probably fine, actually. Because, yeah, the wave is not too close, so I think it's okay to recall here. Is there any reason I wouldn't want to recall? I guess because then I will lose that wave now, since my ADC is going to uh, be alone. But because it's Tristana, I think I'm okay with them being alone, since they have their jump. I, if my Tristana has Flash, I'm especially okay with her being alone, so I guess it depends on that. But I think this realm is fine overall. Again, I just want to question these things. I think it, in the end, yeah, I'm fine with that decision. But I just want to, you know, go through it as much as I can in the replays, anything that I do. But again, we still have those same issues that we're talking about that are really the biggest issues for me so far. Um, the lane phase and then also, like, how I play late game and mid game are both things I can work on a lot. So we'll see as the game goes on more what we could do. I also think uh, they have a Yasuo and a Kai'Sa, so I want to build Rant. Okay, this is way too aggressive. I go in on full health person, I use my ult and my flash, and my Vi is nowhere nearby. So this is, of course, a really greedy play. And then I go too far for it. Yeah, I play this really badly. So again, I'm not paying attention to my jungle. It seems like this is just a very reoccurring issue for me, is not paying attention to where my jungler is, because my jungler was nowhere nearby to gank when I waste my flash and my ult. So that was just very stupid. Um... 
So I'm definitely thinking from this. And once again, uh, when you're looking through these replays, you don't need to find 20 different things to work on. Um, I really think it's good to find one or two to three, maybe four, but like I'd say one to three things to work on and really focus on those in your future games. So for me, in my next like five to ten games, I'm just going to pay a ton of attention to where my jungler is at all times and really try to make all my deci decisions based around what my jungler is doing. Because obviously if you have an extra person there, it's just way more ben beneficial. So I'm going to try much, much harder to play with my jungler in, in situations and I think that can definitely improve my tank gameplay a lot. Um, and then once again, those early lane phases with my ADC, as I've repeated multiple times, um, is another thing that we'll work on. And I think if I work on those two things, I'll already be able to climb quite a bit more. Um, so yeah, overall, it feels like I've already been able to gain some good information from this, even if it's stuff that I kind of like, you know, I knew that I should be doing this, but if you don't actually see yourself making these mistakes, sometimes you'll end up autopiloting and not really doing these things when you don't think about them. Um, for sure, so. Now, the way I play this fight, I just kind of go to try to save my teammate. That, that's pretty fine, I think. One thing that, that I find quite hard in solo queue is lantern usage. Uh, mostly for the reason that a lot of people seem to not take the lanterns, and this makes me kind of... Uh, I don't use my lantern too often for a shield. I think I need to be using my lantern more for ganks and for helping out team and saving them. Even if they're not always going to take it, I think I just need to get in a better habit of using it as if they do know what it does, because I feel like in, in the long run that will be more beneficial and it will uh, save a lot of people's lives and also help with getting extra kills for my team and whatnot. So I think uh, that's also another thing I want to keep, uh, keep in mind is my lantern usage for sure. And using it earlier so that I can get them to notice it earlier, because sometimes they don't notice it when you throw it out in the middle of a fight. So I think I need to try to anticipate my teammates' locations better here. Uh, or with the lantern and then here I try to dodge the pike. Uh, I think that's pretty fine overall what I do there Just making a little engage. I'm gonna die to the Jarvan, but I Think it's okay because I saw my Zed rotating and I want to again look at this decision So the reason that I do this is because I see Zed coming right on the map there And so I go forward and I think in a situation where my jungler or my mid or someone is rotating That's when I'm really okay with making these aggressive plays even if they don't always work out So my decision making there I'm happy with even if the result is not perfect So uh, yeah, I don't know if you guys can hear a plane right now if there's a plane and you hear that I apologize It's a plane outside um, But anyways So far this game we've got those same issues we've talked about working on and now we're going into the mid game kind of after the first dragon and whatnot and uh, generally I feel like I do okay in this point in the game, but there's definitely still issues that can be worked on. One thing I noticed a lot when I was watching especially Lamont play Thresh is how many auto attacks he gets off as Thresh in fights. It's like, even though I'm a support, I feel like I need to be trying to do a lot more damage in these fights because Thresh is a champion who does so much damage. Um, here, pretty good. We get the setup for Archer Sonic to get a double kill, so that worked out well. Even though we end up dying, it's good. And then yeah, they have Yasuo and Kaisa, so I think I needed a Randu and Soman here, and I don't think that I build it. So I believe if I had built Randu and Soman, even first item, honestly, or Deadman's Plate first item, um, for the extra armor, I think that would have been more beneficial. But instead, I think I go for Mantle here. I didn't actually see what do I go for. Let me look through the scoreboard. Uh... Yeah, so I go for Mantle here, and I don't think I should go for Mantle. I think I need either Deadman's or Randuance, or um, I could go honestly like randuance and then dead man's so i think my build is also something i need to think about better because they're full ad basically so they are full ad so yeah i just should have uh to have more armor here for sure and i could even get like a frozen heart or something too but uh this play i like going and getting my adc some good kills so this is good we start kind of coming back i don't remember if we win or lose this game but i think it's pretty close so uh, yeah, now Jarvan coming. I hook. Uh, I thought he was going the other way. That was a dumb hook, but it is what it is. And then Distristana goes crazy. But I think if I lantern earlier, I can help. So I think like I think another thing, even in that situation, when the Tristana jumps in, like I said, anticipating my teammates' plays so the lanterns are easier to take. If I anticipated that she could possibly jump in, I would have been able to react quicker with my lantern. And then I would be able to help my teammate there. So I think I need to think more about my, uh, like what my teammates are going to do so that I can lantern and predict where they're going to go and anticipate it better. So that's definitely um, going to be something I'm going to look at in the future. 
But yeah, my build here, I uh, definitely mess it up not going Randuins and Deadmans, so in the future I'll also keep that in mind. I think if I went Randuins, Deadmans, and then like Frozen Heart, it'd be, it'd be very useful for sure. Even if the Kaisa's ending up going AP, um, I still get the attack speed slow onto the Kaisa with Randuins, so... Okay, now in this team fight, I'm zoning off a pike. I don't think this is very good because I shouldn't chase a pike because he's not very killable. So I think I should not be so far up here chasing pike. I think instead I should stand just to zone pike off, but still also go for hooks on people um, on the enemy team. So instead here, it looks like it's pretty hard for my team to win the fight because I end up going too far by myself. And then, yeah, now we just lose this fight. So this is definitely my fault. I got too distracted. Uh, we might win it in the end. No, it does look like we lose. So yeah. I'm zoning off of Pike, but there's no way we can ever kill Pike because he'll escape with his dash and with his invisibility. So I think my target priority in this fight is very, very poor. I need to be targeting. Um, I didn't even think before this fight who I should target, but I think I should be targeting Yasuo and Kaisa really because if I can, again, if I build this Randu and Soman and then I apply the attack speed slow to them, it's going to be very useful because those are the champions whose attack speed is very important to them. So. I need to be building better, and then I also need to be positioning in a way to stop their carries um, and go on to people that will be killable, because Pike is not really going to be killable in that situation. So yeah, I feel like there's a lot of good stuff to learn here already, and I'm going to really focus on these things once I um, go into my games for, to for later today. So, so this is what I really think is important when you're trying to improve, is just go through games and figure out these things that you can work on, and then... Uh, and then, yeah, just just really focus hard on those. I don't think I'm going to go through the whole replay here because I have so much to work on and I don't like overwhelming myself with a lot of information at once. So um, what I really wanted to get across this video, guys, is just in general, watch other good players if you have time. Um, and then once you do that, watch your own gameplay in the context of what you think they would have done and try to focus on figuring out like one to four things that you could really work on and then try to focus on those things. So in these, this game, now I'm going to go to my notes and I'm just going to write down the four most important things for me to work on. And then after that, I'm going to actually try to do them in my game. So now I'm just going to write, write what I will work on. And then I'll just make a list. All right, so the first thing was walk up when my ADC is inting. Um, basically, if they're going too far forward, I need to go far forward with them because in the end, I need to save their life if I can. Um, secondly, pay attention to my jungler. And I, I won't write it out fully, just pay attention to jungle. Because um, I know what that means, and I just need to know what that means. And what that means to me is make sure I'm trading aggressively when my jungler is nearby. Uh, I'm more passive when my jungler is not here. And the same applies to my mid laner. If my mid laner is rotating and then I start trading more aggressively, and I go for the ganks, or, and I save my flash and everything for that, um, then into the mid game, it's target priority. So again, I'm not going to write out exactly what that means. I'll just explain it to you guys. So what I mean when I say target priority is I need to figure out again, like that Yasuo or that Pike example. I don't want to go for the Pike. You can't be killed. But instead, I need to be going for the Kaisa and for the Yasuo and all of that. And then li lastly is my builds. Um, I just need to think more about them. Go the dead mans and the extra armor when I need that. Go the MR, the mantle um, when I can, you know, need armor and magic resistance and all of those types of things so those are really going to be like the main things i'm going to focus on are these four things and then once i feel i've improved on these four things i'm ending that's just not baseball inting okay i did not see that spelling error anyways these are going to be the four things that i'm going to focus on once i've improved these i will again go through the same process if i still feel stuck and then i will again do the same thing and i just repeat this process until i feel i've improved enough into, and until i climb so this is a process i recommend you guys go through if you think that you're kind of stuck in an elo um anyways i hope you guys enjoyed and i'll see you in the next video